How's it going everybody? In today's video, I'm gonna show you step by step how I build this drone. After that, we're gonna do some flight testing. So I'm gonna take this thing out, see how it flies, do a little bit of freestyle, and then we're gonna to get to testing the GPS rescue. Now, if you're not interested in the build portion of the video and you just wanna see the flight testing, go to this timestamp here. If you wanna see the build and the flight, stick around, we're gonna get into it here. All right, here we got all the parts for the build. We're gonna go through these one by one and then we'll get started building. Starting with our frame here, this is the Speedy B Master 5 version 2. You'll see later on why I chose this frame because of the price and what you get. Next up is our stack, our flight controller and ESC. This is the Speedy B F405 version 3. I have this in one other quad, my 5 inch, and it flies really well. I'm very happy with this stack. Next up is our control link. I'm going with an Express LRS receiver as usual. This is a Happy Model Dual EP1, so it's a diversity receiver. Uh, it, come, it came with two antennas, but uh, I used one of the antennas for something else, and they weren't quite long enough for what I wanted, so I bought this TBS antenna. This is for Tracer, so it's still 2.4 gigahertz. This one's just slightly longer. Next up is a GPS. We are gonna be running a GPS in this build. I've had a lot of success with the GPS in my seven inch build, and I really wanna test uh, video range on walk snail. And of course, it's not really a good idea to, to range test a video system without having GPS rescue. Next, we got our motors. I'm very excited about these. Got them for a super good price. These are T-Motor Velox V3s. And I went with these pink and white so that they will not match the drone at all. <laughs> I don't know, it'll be a colorful mess, but I think they look really cool. These are a 2306 2550KV, so a 4S motor. And finally, our video system. So we are running walk snail in two other of our quads. One of them is the 1S board for our toothpick. The other one is the V2 Pro, so that has the night camera on there, the Sony Starvis sensor. Uh, so that's a Sony camera, but this is the original V2 camera. So I'm curious to see what we get uh, video wise, if there's any difference in image quality or anything like that with this V2. So I'm excited to test this out. We're gonna start here with our frame, get this thing put together for the most part before we move on to the other parts. Um, this frame does come with uh, instructions that are fairly okay as far as uh, how to put this thing together. They're not too bad, but there is some kind of funky stuff in here. All right, so here's really the basics of the frame. You've got four arms, your bottom plate, mid plate, top plate, which is a two piece. You've got these uh, soft, um, they're like silicone mounts, uh, center mounts for your stack. And the front end is gonna be using some CNC aluminum uh, parts. There's an aluminum heat sink here. So this is your camera plate up front. There's only a couple standoffs because these act as a standoff. And uh, I like what they did here. Again, just like the Flyfish Volador, the bags are individually labeled with what's in there, how many, what size, all that stuff. So that's really nice to see. We got the main parts of the quad here. Uh, there are two different uh, lengths of the arms. The rear arms are actually a little bit longer than the front. So we'll take a front arm here, kind of set that down. Rear arm, again, with the puzzle piece. That'll kind of fit over like that. Front arm, rear arm. And they'll kind of go in like that. So that's, that's basically how it's gonna to go together. So that's the front end of the drone. Then you'll take your mid plate and that's gonna go over and kind of squish everything down. All right, so that's basically what it's gonna look like. But we gotta get some screws in here to get everything secured down. And again, those go through and they're like a flush mount. The rest of these do have that, uh, that bevel to them, so they're flush mount as well. And those are gonna go through the other holes and those are gonna connect to your standoffs and these front camera plates that are gonna act as a standoff. So I put on the rear standoffs as well with those flush mount screws. And then I went ahead and uh, put the front end together. It's just these two side camera plates and this uh, split deck top plate. So when the top plate goes on, it's gonna be kind of a two piece I do this so I can kind of mock things up so that way if I question anything or have issues I can kind of, you know, put things together loosely and just see how it's going to look. At this point we got the frame pretty much put together so we're going to set this all aside and we're going to get to some soldering.
We can get the stack screws in here and mount our ESC and get soldering on the ESC. It comes with the stack screws with the frame and it comes with these cool uh, purple lock nuts for the top of the stack. So thankfully the uh, stack already comes with gummies already in these. Now, one thing that might differ from something you guys may be doing, um, the way I'm gonna set this up, I'm actually gonna have the ESC facing backwards because that's how they kind of want you to. So if the ESC is facing backwards, when you mount everything up, you're gonna have your battery lead coming through the hole in the front of the quad and that'll make it easy, it'll wrap around, you can plug in versus it coming out like the side or anywhere else. It's a, it's a much nicer design to have it coming out through the hole in the front. So what that means is we're gonna need the ESC um, positive negative pads to be facing to the front, which typically they'd be facing to the rear and your wires would come out the rear or the side or whatever. But in this case, we're gonna have it facing this way. Typically, you'd have to have your flight controller facing the same way as well. That way, when you plug in your, uh, your cable that goes from the flight controller to the ESC, that they fit. This frame came with this cable, which is the same cable, but much longer. This 3D print here is actually for the capacitor and a beeper that came with the frame. Now, I'm not gonna be using the beeper because I just don't care. Uh, the motors beep and that's enough for me. But uh, this is nice to have to hold the capacitor. That way it's not bouncing around and causing extra um, vibrations in the, in the gyro and whatnot. So we're gonna get this screwed down first. Okay, so we got the capacitor uh, 3D print mounted. That'll allow the uh, capacitor to just kind of slide in here and be held in place. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tin the positive negative pads. We're gonna get the XT60 soldered on there and then I'll throw the capacitor on there. Okay, so those are nicely tinned. XT60 lead already comes pre-tinned, that's nice. And remember, black is negative, red is positive, typically. All right, positive and negative are soldered on. Uh, I'm no expert at soldering, Sometimes my solder joints are terrible, but all my quads seem to work pretty well, so I'm okay with it. Now we gotta get the capacitor on there. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna lift the stack off real quick, and we're gonna put the capacitor in. Okay, so now we can see the capacitor is hanging out in its little mount there, and then the wires come up uh, either side and go to positive and negative. Obviously make sure that the negative uh, side of the capacitor is going to the negative terminal. You don't wanna have that backwards, bad stuff will happen. And then I just have each of the legs kind of uh, going up the side and touching the terminal. So I'm just gonna solder those on where they're at. All right, there we go. So we got that done, that's all solidly mounted. Looks very good. Next thing I'm gonna do real quick while we're at it, I'm just gonna go through and tin all these motor pads. All right, we can see all of our motor pads are nicely tinned. Everything looks good there. All right, the next thing we need to do is get our motors bolted on so we can measure and cut our wire lengths and get those soldered to the ESC. The frame also came with screws specific for the motor mounting because the 3D prints are there and the two of the screws have to go through. There's two different lengths for each motor. Uh, and like I said, everything's well labeled. So we're gonna use the screws that came with the frame. I think they'll work out rather than the screws that came with the motors. All right, there we go. All the motors are on. They look really good. So we got all the 3D printed feet on, so it'll sit nice uh, on the ground. When you're putting your motors on, you wanna make sure that the screws go through enough that they come out kind of flush with the top of the mount, but not so far that it goes through and touches those windings in there, because then you're gonna have an issue. It's gonna short out. It's not gonna be good. 
So the ones where the 3D print is, you can see they come out just a little bit, but not too bad. Um, that's, that's fine, it's not gonna be an issue. Next thing we're gonna do is measure all the motor wires and cut them to length. Then once we cut them, we'll have to retin those and then we can get them soldered to the ESC. So I'm gonna do something a little different from a lot of my other builds that I've done previously. I don't know why I haven't done this in the past. It's like the best way to get your motor wires on. Instead of just going straight up the arm like this and then going straight to the pads, what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna go around the stack screw, loop back around and go like that. So it's gonna, the wires are gonna run up and around the stack screw come back down and they're gonna get soldered down like that. So you, your motor wires are gonna run between the ESC and the flight controller. What that's gonna do though is keep the wires from being out here on the arms so much and they get crust, crushed and squished from you know grabbing the drone and whatnot. And it's just a much, much cleaner look. I'll show you on this quad, my five inch quad, you can see how they just kind of uh, go to the pads, but they're kind of mashed and squished and it looks fine, but I'll show you once we have everything put together, it's a much cleaner look and we want to leave a little bit of extra because we can always trim it up later, but you want to leave a bit of extra just in case. So those are cut like that. They'll wrap around nicely, get soldered down and we'll have plenty of slack. I'm gonna cut the rest of these to length and then we'll get started with uh, soldering them to the board. All right, so we have all the motor wires cut to length and I tinned them all. So I'm gonna show you how to solder up one of these motors and then I'm gonna do the rest off camera. I'll just give you the one example and then the rest are just gonna be the same. So the way we're gonna do this is, like I said, I run my motor wires just flat on the arm and I'll typically uh, just use electrical tape and tape them down. To me, that's a you know clean enough clean enough look for me. Um, so I'm gonna run them flat on the arms. So the way this works on, on your ESC is you have one, two, three pads, you have three motor wires, one, two, three pads, three motor wires, and so on. So if you look closely at the board, it'll, it has a one here, a two here, a three over here, and a four over there. And that's indicating your four motor um, connections. It doesn't matter which one of these three wires goes to which pad over here, as long as all three of these go to these three pads here. All three of these wires go to these three pads here. You don't wanna mix up the motor outputs. So three wires, three pads. You can put whatever wire you want on whatever pad, it doesn't matter. You're gonna change motor direction and which motor is, is what motor later on in beta flight. So don't worry about that. But I'll show you how to do this one here. So I'm just gonna hold the wire like that right there. Get a little bit of solder on my on my iron, just like that. That's perfect. So you can see the wire is nice and melted in there. So we're just gonna continue that process for the other two wires. So now we're gonna get the center wire. You're gonna wanna get a little bit of solder on your tip to kinda tin that. Melt it in. All right, there we go, there's the next wire. Okay, there we go. There's how the motor wires look. They're all soldered up nicely. That looks good to me. So I'm gonna do the rest of these off camera. I showed you the one example, that looks good. And uh, then we'll move on to the next step. All right, and there we go. We got all the motors soldered to the ESC. I'll show you the connections here. So yeah, they all look very good. I'm happy with how that turned out. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is actually get some tape on the motor wires and just kind of tape those down and clean that all up. All right, there we go. I like the way this looks. Uh, it's a very minimalist, uh, kind of simple look. The next thing we need to do is get our flight controller out. I'm just gonna go through and tin all the pads that I'm gonna be using, and I'll show you and explain to you what pads uh, we'll be using. But that way we can just tin everything right now, and that way it's ready to go. We don't have to worry about trying to tin it later when we're going to solder things on. So I will show you the wiring diagram as well, but we are gonna be running Express LRS receiver on here, which is basically the same as Crossfire as far as uh, wiring goes. We're gonna be using a GPS, and then we're gonna be using the Walksnail video system. So right here, we see pads for our GPS. There's SDA, SCL, 
four V5 ground T6 and R6. So that's receive, transmit, just like your receivers are RXTX receive, transmit. Ground, the 4V5 is gonna be a basically a five volt, but you can power, this will get power from USB. So you can plug in your GPS and get satellites without having everything else on and overheating and blocking the GPS signal. So that 4V5 pad's good. And then the SCL and SDA pads are actually for if your GPS has a compass, it's not needed, but uh, I'm not sure how much having the compass on there helps. Now for the walk snail video system, you can see here we have a nine volt ground TX and RX, so T1, R1. So if we look uh, up top here, we've got uh, T2, R2, so receive and transmit again for our receiver. Then we've got four V5 and ground. So again, the 4V5 will be powered off of USB. That way when you're setting things up in Betaflight, your receiver will get power through USB connection. You won't have to have a battery plugged in. So that's nice. So those are all the pads we are gonna tin before we get on with the rest of the build. So pretty easy, just like tinning anything else. Just get a little bit of solder on the tip there. Okay, we got those pads tinned there. And if you're wondering why I'm not using that VTX pad, that's only for analog, because for analog, you would have video into the flight controller and video out since we're using digital. It just communicates with the board using the UART. You don't need uh, the video or the VTX pads. Next thing, we're gonna get the GPS kind of ready to go. So we got our GPS here uh, and it came with this plug nice long plug. So one end of this plug will go into the GPS and the other end we're gonna cut off. And obviously, again, we're just soldering directly to the flight controller. Here is our GPS mount. I just put this together. It's got two screws on each side for the little uh, box that your GPS sits in. So this will actually sit on the two rear standoffs. And then these two big holes down here are to hold a Crossfire or Express LRS antenna for your radio link. In the front here, you'll see this hole. So that's the hole for the plug to go through to plug into your GPS. Now, I did have to make the hole a little bit longer or wider. You might be able to see that I cut out this section over here because when the GPS sits in there, the plug's actually off to one side and originally the hole was right in the middle. So I just trimmed that a little bit so that we can plug right in. Nice, all right, you can see our GPS plugged in. So. Flight controller will sit here, and this will sit over the rear standoffs, how long the wires need to be. So we only really cut off the end of the plug there. We're gonna need quite a bit of wire to reach to there, and uh, if we want them to sit down further. And like I said, we can always twist them up later, and they'll uh, be a bit shorter, and that'll be clean. At this point, we now have the video transmitter ready to go, and the GPS ready to go. The receiver we can worry about a little later because we can do that last and we can kind of put that wherever it needs to go. Uh, but we're gonna start with the video transmitter here. We're gonna get this mounted up. So it came with this heat sink and that's gonna go down in this little hole here. That's gonna cover that. The video transmitter is gonna sit on top of that and it's gonna help with uh, keeping these things cool. And the video transmitter does have two ways of mounting. The smaller inner holes that are empty are a 20 by 20 and the outer ones that hold the heat sinks together, you can use those as well. I think that's a 25 by 25, but we're gonna use the smaller inner ones. And the video transmitter did come with some small screws. We'll just get a couple of these started and then we can tighten them down. Now be careful when you're tightening these down. You want them nice and you know snug, but don't over tighten them because again, this is an aluminum housing, it's very small. Uh, threads, you just don't wanna over tighten them, but just kind of snug them down. So we got all that cranked down and we got the wires here ready to get soldered when it's time to do so. The next thing I'm gonna do is get the GPS kind of mounted up there. So that'll slide down all the way down just like that. Looks good. The next thing I need to do is kind of get the front end of the drone put together. These are the uh, front 
front end aluminum pieces that mount the camera and it comes with these 3D printed pieces that go in the holes there to actually hold the camera in place. All right, so there's the two camera side plates with the 3D printed parts in them. So now, like I said, this actually acts as a standoff for the drone. So it's gonna sit on the front and then there's a hole right here. So you'll see those two screws, like I said, coming through and your side plate is going to come uh, over here. It's gonna sit like that and get bolted down like that. Okay, so there we have the front end of the drone bolted down. Now the camera will go in between those two plates and it'll mount up in there. That'll look good. Okay, so now we got our front end mounted up, bolted down. Camera is mounted, looks good. Uh, I'm not sure about the camera angle. I might have to I don't know, maybe trim this or burn this back with the uh, soldering iron so I can tilt the camera back a little further. I don't know yet. I'll see on my first flight how it does and then uh, go from there. So the next step we need to do is connect our flight controller to our ESC using this long plug. I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So it's a little hard to see because there's no light in there, but there's the plug on the bottom of the ESC. It's really hard to see. It's just underneath my finger there. And um, so one end of this cable is gonna plug in down there. So I'll do that real quick. Now we got our plug into the bottom of the uh, ESC. Like I said, it's a little hard to see down there, but you can see it's plugged in on the bottom. Okay, this is gonna plug into our flight controller. Okay, so you can see it's plugged in right there. Basically what we're gonna do is just kinda go like that, push it over and put the stack down like that. All right, so we got all those nuts tightened down. You don't wanna have them uh, too tight. You just kinda, um, just kinda snug them up. Okay, so now I got all these wires tinned. They're ready to get soldered. I'm probably gonna start with our GPS wires because those are on the left-hand side and it'll be easier to move left to right as far as uh, being right-handed with the soldering iron. So I'll show you kind of a diagram as well, but just for reference, this gray wire on our far, far left is, uh, this is gonna be our T wire, so transmit. This white wire is gonna be receive, so that's our R. Black is obviously ground. Next is our red wire, that's our five volt. This blue wire is our SCL, and the green wire is SDA. We're gonna start here with our green wire, which is SDA because that's going to be in the top that's going to be in the top corner here. So we'll start with this one. They look like big waves on camera, but they're they're big waves in real life. I don't know how good those tin boats are. Okay, so next to the SDA is the SCL wire, and again, these are for the compass. Um, they're probably not needed like some GPSs don't come with them, but mine does, so we're going to solder them on. Okay, next is our 5 volt which is going to a 4V5 pad. So it can be powered off of um, USB. Okay, next to that is our ground wire. And then our receive and transmit or RX and TX. So next our white wire, which is our R, needs to go to the T on the flight controller. And then last is our T wire, which needs to go to the R on the flight controller. All right, so hopefully you guys can see that. We've got everything soldered up there. So actually what I'm gonna do now is kind of pull the GPS mount back off and twist the wires up and put it back down so that's a, a much cleaner look. All right, so we got the wires nicely twisted up. That uh, looks a lot better. Now we gotta get the wires for the VTX soldered onto the flight controller. So this one is a pretty simple setup. Again, uh, this is only four wires, so it's gonna be five volt ground RX TX. All right, so you can see there we've got a uh, nine volt ground T and R, so we're gonna get the video transmitter wires soldered to that. The VTX does come with this card, so it gives you uh, the wiring coming out of your VTX so you know what's what. So we're gonna start with our power wire here. 
It's a nine volt. Next to the nine volt is the ground pad. And then we have RX and TX. So the white wire coming from the VTX is the receive or the R. So that needs to go to the T on the flight controller. And the last one, the gray wire, the T coming from the VTX, which needs to go to the R on the flight controller. Okay, now you can see all the wires for the video transmitter are soldered on, looks good. We can just, again, twist these up before we plug it in and it'll kind of clean things up. All right, so that looks very good. It's nice and clean. No issues there with the wires. One last thing we have to solder on is our receiver here. So we gotta find a spot for that, get that soldered on. This is why I say always keep your extra wires because I have a whole box full of all types of different wires because the receiver did not come with any. Okay, so I figured out what we're gonna do with the uh, receiver. I've got both antennas mounted and that's basically the, the limiting factor when it comes to mounting that. On the front end, you can see where I've got the antenna mounted. See, it's kind of sitting underneath the camera. So it's just zip tied down there and then it runs inside the frame there for the rear antenna is just sitting kind of loosely in this mount. It'll be kind of loose back there, but it, it won't come out, it'll be fine. So we're gonna start with this gray wire here on the T. White wire is gonna go on R2 here. Next is our 4V5, which is like a five volt same thing. And then last is our ground wire. All right, so we got all those on there. Looks good. Now I gotta get those onto the receiver. And at this point we can see what wire is where because we put them on to the flight controller. And as usual, R goes to T, T to R. They go, to the, they go to opposites because it's transmit and receive. So this gray wire here is the T coming off of our flight controller. So we want that to go to the R on our uh, receiver. Next is our white wire, which is the R coming off of our flight controller. We want that to go to the T of the receiver. Next is five volt. The last one is ground. All right, so you can see all those nicely soldered. Slide the heat shrink over. So now we'll stick these on. Doesn't matter which one goes where. All right, so there we go. We just got the receiver stuck down to the top of the video transmitter. Uh, that'll work perfectly. Now, I think the Last thing we got to do, we got to put these standoffs back in um, right behind here, get those on, and then we need to get the video transmitter antenna on. And I think after that, we can do our first plug-in and see what we got. We need to get the video transmitter antenna on. The way we do that, VTX here on the back, you'll see, um, an Allen screw here and one in both corners. Uh, you pop these off and then this whole plate lifts up. Okay, so we got that plate off. You can see right there the uh, UFL connector where the antenna goes on. Um, this piece is the rear, uh, one of the rear antenna mounts. It's the one we're gonna be using. So what you're gonna do is you take your antenna here Whatever one you're using, you're gonna slide this little circle thing over. Then you're gonna slide your VTX antenna down through here. So it's just gonna go down in that little hole. And then we can get this antenna. Boom, nice. Okay, the antenna's on, that's good. We're gonna grab this plate again. 
and tighten this down. That'll hold the uh, antenna connector down so that it won't pop off. So perfect. We're gonna get this 3D print pushed down over the top of these standoffs. And then this little circle thingy, this little circle thing just kind of slides over the whole uh, piece to kind of crimp down on the antenna. Wow, that was a little bit difficult to get on, but I guess that's a good thing. It means it's gonna hold it in uh, nice and tight. All right, so we are done with the building portion anyway. Everything's hooked up and we're ready for our first plug-in. Uh, I'm gonna leave the top plate off and uh, I'll show you guys, you know, the completely finished all done product when we get to the flight portion of the video. But um, for the first plug-in, I wanna leave everything open so I can see what's going on. But yeah, let's do our first plug-in here. Always make sure you're using a smoke stopper when you do you these uh, first plugins in case there's any issues that you may have missed. I'll plug this in here like that. Uh, here we go, first plugin. Nice. Well, we didn't get uh, any smoke that came out. That's good. We got all the uh, all the beeps, the motor motor beeps, the tones. Um, Everything's lighting up, it looks good. All right, so that's good. Everything works, everything lights up. Nothing uh, caught on fire when we plugged it in. So next thing I'm gonna do is get this in the computer, get everything configured, tuned, set up, and then we're gonna go fly this thing. We're gonna do a test flight. If you guys wanna learn how to get a quad set up in Betaflight, tuned and set up and everything, I would send you over to uh, Joshua Bardwell's channel. He's super good, obviously very well known in the FPV community. So go check out his channel and he has tons of videos on anything you could ever think of regarding quads or beta flight setup. Uh, I'm not gonna show that because it's gonna take up too much time. We're gonna go test fly this thing. We're gonna see just how it flies. We're gonna test the GPS rescue function. That's why there's a GPS on here. And we're gonna see how this uh, walk snail system looks with this camera. I have not flown with this specific camera yet, so I'm curious to see how it looks compared to the pro camera or the uh, little tiny one ass board nano cameras. But let's get into some flight footage. Ah, such a beautiful day. All right, so here we are for the flight test portion of this video. For those of you who stuck around for the entire build video, thank you very much, I appreciate that. Hopefully these videos help you guys out. That's part of the reason I make them is I enjoy making them and I'm gonna build the drone anyway but also if there's information in there that helps you guys out that's awesome so uh, yeah here we are in the location for the flight test as you can see it is an absolutely beautiful day sunny it's freezing cold outside it's probably I don't know 32 35 degrees maybe it's very cold outside but um, which is definitely gonna affect our flight times so Flight time in this video is, is gonna be skewed. It's not gonna be very good. Probably have really short flight time, so we're not gonna pay attention to that too much. Just mainly how the drone flies and the GPS rescue. Okay, so for those of you who have not seen uh, the finished product yet, here's how it looks. I think it looks absolutely amazing. It looks super good. I like the yellow. I think it looks cool and colorful. Uh, and with the pink and white motors, yeah, they don't match. Uh, overall, I think it looks really good. All right, so today for our test flight, we're gonna be doing uh, a couple different te test flights. The first one is just gonna be uh, just general flight, kind of freestyle, see how the quad reacts, make sure it flies okay. There's no funky jitters or any uh, just weird PID tuning issues or anything like that. Uh, we'll just kind of cruise around, see how it does. Uh, after that, I'm gonna go into some uh, GPS rescue testing. So we're gonna test GPS rescue. I'll have three different recordings going here. So I'll have one from the uh, walk snail goggles DVR. So you could see all the flight data and all that stuff as I'm flying. I'll have some recordings from the actual VTX as well. And then of course I've got the GoPro on here. So I can show you kind of a mix of all three of those. So you can kind of see what it looks like. Um, give you a better view of, of what walk snail has to offer for their video. In the next video, future video, I think I'm gonna dive into some GPS rescue stuff. There seems to be a lot of uh, people that uh, have issues with beta flight GPS rescue. Uh, people say it's bad and whatnot, but I've seemed to have a lot of success with it. And uh, I've done some decent extensive testing with it with the, you know, the couple quads that I have that have GPSs. So uh, I'm gonna do probably like a, a setup video, a guide of how to install the GPS correctly, um, how to set how to set it up in beta flight for it to actually work correctly, and how to properly test it and all that. So. Um, that seems to be something that I think would help a lot of people. Anyway, with all that out of the way, let's get into the first flight here. Just kind of a general test flight, see how it does. All right, just getting this thing set up here, ready to go. 
How's my hair look? Does it look good? Okay, no one cares. <laughs> oh. I am getting some fogging in the goggles pretty much right away, so that's not good. Wow, a lot of fogging. Um, I guess we're gonna have to just fly with the fog here. That seems to be running pretty smooth. Oh, look at that, yeah. Nice. Yeah, it seems really smooth. That's good. Oh, touch the ground there a little bit. Battery's getting down there already. We're at 3.6, 3.7, just because it's so it's so cold. We are running uh, max. Uh, output power of the video system, so we shouldn't have any issues there for the most part, anyway. Video looks good to me so far. Yeah, looks good, nice and smooth. Other than having no power, because it's cold. Yeah, our battery's already down there. Could be off, but could just be because it's cold. Did I hit something? Oh, that was weird. I gotta come back. I don't know what just happened. I have no idea how I'm still in the air either. That was freaking weird. What the hell just happened? Whoa, dude. That was weird. Okay. I'm sure you guys will uh, see that in the footage, but the quad just kind of freaked out and was like doing all kinds of crazy flips and sh Oh, sorry, I'm not supposed to swear. That was kind of crazy. Um, okay. Flight mode echo. Danger. Acro mode. That was weird. I don't know what that was. See, we're at 3.7 until we lift off the ground. We may have an issue with our quad here. That's yeah, okay, seems to be okay. All right, now we're about a thousand milliamps, 3.5, we gotta land. There we go. All right. Okay, that was, uh, that was seriously weird. That was totally, I don't know what the hell happened. At first I thought maybe I hit like the, a tree branch or something and just didn't notice or I don't know. And then I thought maybe the maybe one of the wires for the battery got, you know, caught up in the prop and it made it. I don't know. That was so weird. Man, I'll have to look through that footage just to see even what happened. That was super weird. I have no idea what happened. Okay, well, that was really odd. I have no idea 
what that was or why that happened, but um, we'll just say that was a fluke. <laughs> we'll just say that was a, just a random event and that it won't happen again and we'll move on, so. All right, so for this next pack, we're gonna do uh, the GPS rescue testing. Okay, so the battery's been plugged in for maybe like a minute or two now. I'm gonna unplug it, power everything on, and we should have full satellites. Uh, yeah, I think we're ready for some GPS rescue testing now. We got 18 satellites right now. I don't know why my altitude says we're at 20, we're at 2,000 feet. Danger. Now when I arm, it's, it's mostly correct. All right, so we're just gonna go out here a ways and um, I'm gonna do it low to the ground in case there's any issues and it decides to just drop to the ground. Okay, real quick, I did wanna let you guys know, uh, as far as the OSD is concerned, I'm using a third-party software to overlay the OSD because it does not record in the goggle DVR natively. So some of the OSD elements are a little off. Right there, we've got average cell voltage, that's correct, just below that, amps, uh, how many amps I'm pulling, that's correct. Below that, the milliamp hour, uh, how many milliamps I pulled, that's correct. Below that is total distance during the flight. Below that, altitude right there. And then at the bottom, we've got my radio output and then total flight time. Uh, on the upper right there, you've got how many satellites? You've got 17. Below that, this one says milliamp hour KM and it has a battery symbol. I'm not sure why. That's actually my miles per hour. Below that is our distance from home. That's how far away we are from the takeoff point. Uh, the arrow on this doesn't update correctly and doesn't point the right way. Uh, it does in my goggles and I'm flying, but for some reason it's not working on here. That's all right. And then we have um, link quality and RSSI DBM under that. It's always a good idea when you're first testing to do it low to the ground. And that way if it decides to just disarm, it's not gonna hurt the quad. 18 sats, we're about 500 feet away from home and GPS, GPS rescue is on. coming back doing good it's a little low but that's okay I'm gonna shut it off here danger okay I'm not really sure what happened with that so that was cool I think I disarmed by accident let's try that again that was my fault it did work though. Okay, we're good. All right, quad seems fine. Again, we're gonna go out a little ways. I'm gonna do it a little higher this time. Okay, we're about 500 feet out and GPS. So it's coming up, turning. There we go, it's coming back. Very nice, looking good. I'm not gonna let it land on its own. So yeah, that was the problem the first time is that I was actually disarmed when I turned GPS off and that's why it fell to the ground. But yeah, it seems to be working good. Uh, I am running Betaflight 4.4.3 or whatever the latest is and I've noticed that the GPS rescue on here compared to like 4.3, whatever, this is much better. It makes coordinated turns correctly and it's just, it's great. Okay, so now we're a bit further out. GPS. They're roughly a thousand feet out. See how it makes those pitched forward kind of like nice corrective turns. It looks good. It's doing exactly what I've set it to. About 35 miles an hour is what I've set it to cruising back, no problem. It probably would land on its own if I let it, but I'm not going to. I just don't trust it. And if I was gonna let it land on its own, I would do this in the grass, not, uh, you know, not in the parking lot here. But, okay, yeah, so I mean, it's working really good. GPS rescue seems to work fantastically. Seems to work really good. Now we're getting some, uh, some mushy screen stuff here. We are kind of flying by like a Wi-Fi antenna tower, so there's that. Oops, sorry lady, didn't see you there.
So let's try this. Let's go like this, mid turn or something. See it automatically corrects and starts coming back. So I'll explain more of this in my GPS rescue tutorial video, but I've set things up to where as soon as I hit GPS rescue, it automatically goes into angle mode right away and punches up. That way, if you're mid turn or something, it's, it'll automatically level out right away. And that's part of, you know, like I said, how I set it up for GPS rescue. And I will go more in depth, you know, in that video. There we go. This isn't the best GoPro mount. Uh, I typically, you know, this is, this is mounted with just this uh, single bolt design. On my actual freestyle quad, I have like a full cage design. That way there's no chance of it ever, you know, moving back and forward. With these, they're kind of made more for like kind of cinematics where you're not doing too much crazy stuff. You know, this isn't gonna survive well in a crash. There's no protection for the GoPro and it's, it's gonna flop back and forth every time you have a little bump or a landing that's a little off. So is isn't the greatest, but for what we're doing, it works fine. I'm just having it on there for like an extra, an extra view, uh, camera view for you guys. All right, so I think that worked out really well, actually. Um, we did a few tests. Every time it was spot on, it came back to me quickly, precisely, at the, the exact speed that I set it for. Um, no issues there. And then as you can see at the end, when it pitches back really hard, it starts to come down like it's gonna, wants to land on its own. But like I said, we're not gonna do that today. Uh, I just wanted to make sure the GPS rescue stuff works uh, as far as this flight test for the build video goes so you guys can see that. But in my next video, we're gonna be focusing on strictly just GPS rescue settings and, and how to set that up, how to install the GPS correctly. And in that video, I will do some auto landing, see how it does and um, I'll show you the differences. Right now, like I said, I'm on Betaflight 4.4.3, so the latest version, and uh, it seems to be way better than 4.3. whatever. Um, it just seems more precise in its turns and the way it's doing its thing. But um, yeah, I think, I think it flies really well, other than that weird, that weird flipping thing that happened. I appreciate you guys checking out the video. I think it turned out well. Uh, if you have any questions about the build or GPS stuff or anything like that, let me know uh, down in the comment section. Uh, I, I reply to pretty much every comment because I, my channel's fairly small. And so uh, thankfully I'm able to do that. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, I'll get back to you. Uh, like the video, subscribe if you wanna see more. I'm gonna have more videos, uh, probably more build videos. Like I said, GPS rescue stuff. I've got a bunch of videos for the future. Um, so if you, like, if you like what I do here on this channel, I would appreciate the subscribe and uh, hitting the like button. Uh, it helps out the channel a lot, more than you, more than you know, especially me being a, a small YouTuber. I really appreciate you guys. Uh, I think we just recently hit a thousand subscribers, so I, that's huge for me. I mean, that's I never, I honestly never thought I'd get anywhere near even like 500. So hitting a thousand subs is is awesome. Um, but yeah, I appreciate it, guys, and uh, stick around. I'll see you guys in the next video.